don't think it's going to pivot anymore. You think? <laughs> Welcome, it's your girl, Miss Paula, and you are at the Cha-Ching Show. Today's show is all about the power of the pivot and why pivoting is so important. Even in our everyday lives, pivoting is important. If today you were to get a health diagnosis, right? It would mean that you would have to pivot. It would change some things that's going on in your life because if you didn't, well, you know what the future would hold. It would not be positive. The same thing goes in business and in marketing. There are times where you have to evaluate where you are as a, as a company, as a business, as a brand, and say, is it time to pivot? This week in, in, in business news, uh, Tupperware was the, the hot topic because this long standing brand um, that our parents and grandparents made famous and rich um, has announced that they will more than likely be closing the doors if they do not get some emergency funding. And um, it makes you question, you know, a company that's been around that long, what would be the issue? What would cause, you know, such a thing to happen? And it brings us to the topic of pivoting. Um, there were two major causes as to why this is happening uh, to Tupperware. One, the competition. The competition has come in um, at a time, you know, Tupperware came out, they were number one. They were on top. You always have to anticipate the competition is coming, especially when you're on top. So the competition comes in and they have substantially lower pricing. That's number one. And then number two, if you start to look at who the new consumer is and you start to think about plastics, well, then you can see why they may be having an issue. I did a comparison. I looked at Rubbermaid and I looked at Rubbermaid because that's that's who I have in my home, right? That's a brand that I'm using in my home. And I'm like, I don't have anything from Tupperware. Um, I don't think Tupperware is like anywhere that I shop that's like eye level readily available to me. So Rubbermaid is, I know I can see Rubbermaid at ShopRite, I see Rubbermaid at Target, I see Rubbermaid at the Dollar Tree, right? So Rubbermaid in my opinion has made themselves totally accessible to the consumer. So when looking at um, why they may be failing, we have to look at the fact that um, they, weren't, they weren't able to pivot. Um, looking at a, a three to five piece set um, at, Tupperware as opposed to looking at a three to five piece set at um, Rubbermaid, it, there's some big differences. So when they say that one of the issues was that the um, competition was able to offer the product at a substantially lower price, I looked at these two sets, right? So one of the sets that Rubbermaid had was a 14 piece set. It comes up at $11.99. Um, the only thing I didn't like about Rubbermaid was that you have to, you can't buy directly from their website. You have to go to a reseller such as Target or Walmart. Um, and when I look at a Tupperware set that has 10 pieces in it, they're selling it for $27. So you, you definitely can see, um, you can see that the pricing could be an issue. I think another issue when we start to look at who the consumer of tomorrow is, um, the consumer of tomorrow, millennials, Generation Z, very highly concerned about climate change. As we know, plastics, it's, it's a no-go. Here in the state of New Jersey, we are not allowed to have plastic bags anymore at the store. So if you go to a store, we have to bring reusable bags because this has become such an issue. So I looked and saw Rubbermaid, although they uh, um, uh, produce plastic products, they also give you the option of glass. And I think that's important that consumers have um, options, right? It, where we have options, we are more likely to shop as well. Another uh, a company, I'll give you another company who did not do well with pivoting and we saw their demise, which was Blockbuster. Um, and then Netflix rose up. Um, you have to always be able to say, you know, where the market is at today, can I be flexible and using marketing as a way to lure in the new customer? Now I want us to explore and discover brands that did the pivoting very well. We just spoke about Netflix. Netflix did the pivoting very well because as you know, they started out as a company that delivered DVDs to your front door. Today, they are known for being a brand that is for binge watching, right? So they, they saw the market, they saw where we were going and they pivoted and they did it very well. Um, very lucrative company. They're doing very well still as they continue to raise fees. They still have, they still have customers, right? 
Um, I want to also give the example of abdominals. This is always like my favorite example to give because I was totally in love with the way that they did this. Domino's um, was Domino's Pizza, if you remember. It was the, the logo was Domino's Pizza. All of the storefront said Domino's Pizza. And they, they were very deliberate. They wanted you to know that they offered more than just pizza now. They had a campaign, and I don't know if you can remember, but they had a campaign where uh, the commercials would show people knocking off the pizza sign and it would just be left with Domino's. I remember that and I was like, very, very crafty. Finding a way to sort of make fun of yourself or, or putting yourself in a spotlight, you know that, you know, it can be very, very beneficial. It worked for Domino's. We then saw them uh, offering pastas, um, um, uh, wings, different elements that they were able to bring in under the brand, but they had to let you know that we are more than pizza. Pivoting. Another brand um, that, that has done pivoting really, really, really well is PayPal. PayPal started off as processing payments uh, for companies like eBay. They were really strongly linked to eBay. If we look in today's world, eBay is not so relevant. Um, we have a lot of smaller brands that are doing consigning um, consignment very, very well. One of them that I love is Covet Boston. They're out of Boston. Very, they do they do it very well. Another one is the Real Real. Um, so eBay has sort of like fallen off, but PayPal has not. PayPal managed to stay relevant by uh, uh, linking themselves into the smartphone world. Again, looking at the landscape and knowing exactly um, how to position yourself. And it has been very successful for them. One that you may not know of or even um, would think has done the pivoting very well is Instagram. Instagram started as um, an online service that allowed people to check in where they were at. Today, we know them to be the hotspot for photos, for videos. As you can see, um, some time ago, they even introduced reels and giving a customer something we'll talk about at another time is the customization um, process that you give customers that, that experience of being able to customize things as it pertains to them. Instagram has done that very well. And my last example is one that I just found um, to be like, you know, I, I fell in love with them again. When I was in high school, I loved the Express brand. Oh, I love shopping at Express. But over the course of time, it just like, they, they uh, lack luster. It's a store that I stopped going to. I didn't feel like they really kept up with trends very well. I didn't find anything when I would go there. Well, as of today, I am here to tell you. I just ordered like four suits from, from Express. They have um, done a really, really good job with the sizing. Um, as, you, as you know, maybe 10, 15 years ago, we didn't cater to the plus size community. We, we didn't consider them in our ads and in our marketing, but we do now. And Express is doing a really good job um, of making sure that um, the sizes, I know that extra large is something I would normally order from Express because they would normally cut a little smaller. And I'm actually having to take it back because that extra large is really fitting like extra, extra large. So they have done it again. They have brought the girls back a lot. And I, I really appreciate that. So again, being able to pivot, we have had um, examples um, where if you don't, we see what happens. But if you are able to come to a table, pull some strategies together, really fall in love with the marketing behind the pivot, you can be powerful. So good question is how do I know when to pivot like when do when do I know as a brand I'm a small brand um, I might have one or two employees or none I may be the only employee how would I know when to pivot um, these are some key there's there's many right but I'm gonna give you the top three data data is so important because data really allows you to see what is and what is not um, being able to use data in a way to drive your marketing and drive how you're going to spend money to pull in more customers is really, really smart. Another way is keeping your ear to the street, knowing what's happening, what's trending right now, what are people liking? Understanding that is going to allow you to be able to look at what your current offerings are and see if you need to pivot. Another one is knowing your customer patterns and behavior. It's so important that you spend some time, some good time 
really, really um, um, falling in love with your customers in a way that you know what they like. You know their patterns. You know when you put a sale together, how they buy. You know exactly what the customer is anticipating from you. And if you don't know that, you are not gonna be able to pivot you know, in a very successful way. Those are three, there's so many more, but if you can just like hone in on those three, I know that you'll be able to, to really ask yourself, when is the time for me to pivot? And you start looking at those things, you'll be able to say, okay, now is the time to pivot, or I can hold back. I really don't need to change too much right now, but getting the, uh, the, the, the habit of constantly taking inventory of your customers, of your data and is your brand delivering okay so that's how you know when it's time for you to print it i want to go into another segment a segment i am absolutely excited about brands that i love brands that i see um either you know doing marketing really well the products are, are really delivering um at high quality the first one that i want to speak about is a young lady that i discovered on instagram and I actually fell in love with her because of her marketing. Her name is, um, I believe, Shakina Miles. Her brand is called Crazy, C-R-A-Z-Y underscore hands, H-A-N-D-Z. Why do I love it? I have not even tried the product. She makes um, wigs. She makes, you know, clo closure wigs, lace wigs. She does sew-ins. And she's out of the Philadelphia, Delaware area. And um, again, I have not tried the product. This is about the marketing. I recently saw where she did a marketing campaign about slaying heads, right? you know? So she's doing these heads so good, she's slaying them. And they arrest her because she's slaying heads. And they, you know, she has a whole scene where she goes into the jail and she's a prisoner and she's like, I don't care, I'm gonna keep slaying these heads. And then what does she drop? She drops a cell for the wigs. I was like so impressed by that. This is a small brand that is using creativity to elevate herself, her brand, her products, her offerings. I loved it. Check her out. That was a brand that this week that I can say that I absolutely love. I am going to check out the products just based off of the marketing. And that's what effective marketing is going to do. It's going to pull in customers that have never, ever tried you, but it's also going to keep the customers that you already have entertained and in love. Another brand um, that I am, am looked at, and I'm gonna do um, my segment of hot or not, um, is the Dewey's Cookies brand. Dewey's Cookies caught my attention because uh, each cookie was only two grams of carbs per cookie. And I'm like, it has to taste like garbage, but I'm gonna give it a try. Why? Because I am a type one diabetic. Um, carbs do matter to me, but so does quality and taste. So. The Dewey's Cookie brand, I felt, I love the packaging. I think that they did a really, really good job with the packaging. As you can see, um, it has a, a see-through area, so you can actually see what type of cookie you're gonna get. These are like thin, crispy, like wafery cookies. And let me tell you, the quality is there. The quality is there. I didn't feel like I was missing anything because it was two grams of carbs. Um, it, it's a nice thin cookie. You can have about two or three and still be like under six grams of carbohydrates. Whether you have diabetes or uh, just looking to watch your weight and live a little healthier, I fell in love with this brand. I wanted to share it with you. I think it's a brand that you should look at. Another thing that I like that Dewey's did, Dewey's right now only offers you a few selections. And why is that important? It allows you as an entrepreneur, um, as a brand strategist, it allows you to really be able to hone in on the brand and tell that story the way it needs to be told when you only have two, three, four offerings that you, you're, you're offering right now to customers. And I just think they did it really, really well. The quality was there, um, the packaging, I loved it. The, the taste was really, really good. So I think that they hit it. I think that they did really good. And um, this is just another brand that I love. So they get on um, the hot or not. Yes, they are hot. They are hot for me. So I um, urge you to check them out and urge you to check Crazy Hands out. Two brands that I feel are hitting it spot on with the marketing. Um, went to Forbes.com this week and um, every week I'll be doing a Tequila Me Baby session 
And the Tequila Me Baby session is, you know, I love tequila. I love tequila when I'm hosting. Um, I love for my guests to try different tequilas. And I wanted to start really simple today, right? I wanted to start with a brand that I felt like we were all accustomed to, which was Patron. I know that we all know Patron. We, we, um, have probably tasted it. It's one of the bigger brands. So even if you have not frequented, I'm sure you have gone into um, a store and you have seen this bottle. I did some homework on Patron and I wanted to use this as a moment to um, inspire because I was really inspired by the story. Um, very briefly, um, Patron was established in, in 1989 and we see it today as this successful brand, but they had a lot of hiccups in the, along the way, but they, they stuck it through. Um, if you know um, um, Paul Mitchell Systems, I've known that brand, the hair brand. Um, that is one of the owners and another owner um, was a man and that was John Paul I have a hard time saying his name DeGorgia and then um, he met a man named Martin Crowley and they came into a partnership and when they brought Patron to market it was absurdly expensive like they were laughed out of that the, the, the liquor um, and spirits and alcohol industry was looking at them like this is really expensive nobody's gonna buy that they stuck with it um, long story short Martin Crowley um, um, they needed some distribution so they start by going to uh, um, Jim Beam and Jim Beam didn't give them an offer that they like and um, Crowley then persisted and moved on and they end up with Seagram's and he was there and he really didn't like Seagram's but he was locked in with Seagram's and could not just get out of the deal with Seagram's. So at some point he ends up suing Seagram's. It ends up allowing him to um, divorce from the deal. He then meets a man named Ed Brown who becomes a partner. And now we're, now we're down to about 2003. And uh, Crowley then dies. And um, uh, Ed Brown saw the vision. He believed in it. He stuck with it. And in 2012 was when they sold, um, you know, two million cases that year. And I use them as an example because here we are. We see this this big brand. Um, they had to pivot. They had to pivot in order to, to stay on top and to stay um, in the game. They are still the number one tequila company. And um, that's not by accident. That comes with a lot of um, skill for marketing. It comes with love for the customer and keeping your ears to the street so that you do understand what the customer is um, desiring and that you can provide that. A lot of times as entrepreneurs, as business owners, we are so concerned with the price that, oh my God, they're not gonna buy it because it's too expensive. But people don't buy expensive or cheap, they buy value. You have to be able just to sell the value. If I can make the value make sense to the dollar, then I'll buy. So being able to pivot is now how we have this amazing, amazing, amazing brand. Um, I wanted to just recap about why pivoting is so important and why pivoting will make you powerful. Pivoting is important because it's going to help you meet customer demand. It's going to allow you to shift your target audience if needed, or it's going to do both. And in either case, it's going to make you a winner. So in today's world, if you want to stay profitable and you want to stay relevant, you better know how to pivot. Thank you. Yeah.